Once again, good morning, brothers and sisters. A blessed day to all of you and to those who join us in worship through this live stream at the Diocesan Shrine of Jesus, the Divine Word, in Christ the King Mission Seminary. Today is Saturday of the 24th week in Ordinary Time. The Church also celebrates today the Memorial of the Blessed Virgin Mary on Saturday. Our Mass Presider today is Rev. Father Sherwin Aramin SVD, Head Prefect of Christ the King Mission Seminary. Our celebration will now begin. Gathered together to praise and thank the Lord in the name of the Father and of the Son of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Welcome to our Eucharistic celebration, my dear brothers and sisters. We also welcome those who are joining us through our live streaming. Let us now acknowledge our sins, my dear brothers and sisters as we prepare ourselves again to celebrate these sacred mysteries and receive the Word of God and the Eucharist, the presence of Jesus in our midst. Together we say, I confess, I confess to Almighty God, God and, and to you, you my, my brothers and sisters, sisters that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask the Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us forgive us our sins, and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. We take devoted Mass in honor of our Blessed Mother Mary. We continue to ask her maternal protection as we face these difficulties and struggles because of the pandemic. As we venerate the glorious memory of the Most Holy Virgin Mary, grant we pray, O Lord, through her intercession, that we too may merit to receive from the fullness of your grace to our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen.
Our reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Timothy. Beloved, I charge you before God, who gives life to all things, and before Christ Jesus, who gave testimony under Pontius Pilate, for the noble confession to keep the commandment stain or reproach until the appearance of our Lord Jesus Christ, that the blessed and only ruler will make manifest at the proper time, the King of kings and the Lord of lords, who alone has immortality, who dwells in an approachable light, and whom no human being has seen or can see. To him be honor and eternal power. Amen. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Sing joyfully to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before Him with joyful song. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Know that the Lord is God. He made us. His we are. His people. The flock He tends. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. Enter His gates with thanksgiving, His courts with praise. Give thanks to Him. Bless His name. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. For He is good, the Lord, whose kindness endures forever, and His faithfulness to all generations. Come with joy into the presence of the Lord. We rise to honor the Holy Gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. When a large crowd gathered with people from one town after another, journeying to Jesus, he spoke in a parable. A sower went out to sow his seed, and as he saw some, fe some seed fell on the path, and was trampled, and the birds of the sky ate it up. Some seed fell on rocky ground, and when it grew, it withered for lack of moisture. Some seed fell among thorns, and the thorns grew with it and choked it. And some seed fell on good soil, and when it grew, it produced fruit a hundredfold. After saying this, he called out, Whoever has ears to hear ought to hear. Then his disciples asked him, What is the meaning of this parable might be? He answered, The knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom of God has been granted to you, but to the rest they are made known through parables, so that they may look but not see, and hear but not understand. This is the meaning of the parable. The seed is the word of God. Those on the path are those who have heard, but the devil comes and takes away the word from their hearts, that they may not believe and be saved. Those on rocky ground are the ones who, when they hear, receive the word with joy, but they have no root. They believe only for a time and fall away in time of temptation. As for the seed that fell among thorns, they are the ones who have heard, but as they go along, they are choked by the anxieties and riches and pleasures of life, and they fail to produce mature fruit. But as for the seed that fell on rich soil, 
They are the ones who, when they have heard the word, embrace it with generous and good heart and bear fruit through perseverance. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. A blessed day to all of you, my dear brothers and sisters. Good morning to all of you. Our gospel for today, we try to reflect on how do we receive the Word of God. Paano nga ba natin tinatanggap ang salita ng Diyos sa ating buhay? Jesus in our gospel for today speaks of the parable of the sower. The Word of God is sown in different, different kinds of soil, representing different kinds of recipient of the Word of God. For sure, ilang beses na nating narinig itong parable na ito at napagnilayan sa ating buhay. But it is also, let us again remind ourselves how good are we at listening, especially to the Word of God. Are we good hearers of the Word of God? And as we listen and reflect the Word of God, can we see that it is growing and bearing fruit in our life? My dear sisters and brothers, Jesus reminds us again in this parable that God is ever ready to speak to us, to each one of us, and to give us understanding of His Word. God is the sower who keeps sowing freely and generously His Word to us. God's Word is consistently at work in us, planting good seed in our life. But the question and even the problem is, how do we receive the message or the Word of God in our life? God is there giving us His blessing. God is there always speaking to us His message. But are we listening and accepting His Word in our life? And if we listen and accept it, are we growing as Christians, as children of God, bearing fruit in our daily life? In our gospel, some seeds, sabi dito sa ating gospel, fell in the rocky ground. Obviously, pag nahulog sa matigas na lupa, mabatong lupa, it cannot grow because it is not deep. It cannot penetrate the soil or the water cannot penetrate the soil for the seed to be moist or watered. Meaning, if we listen to the Word of God, but it... it we listen to the Word of God and it just passes. Dumadaan lang sa ating buhay. It does not sink in our hearts and minds and more so in our actions. We just neglect it because we think it is not important. We think that the Word of God is not necessary in our life, especially if our life is okay. Or we reject the Word of God because it does not fit our lifestyle, or way of thinking. Pag yung salita ng Diyos binabagabag ang ating konsensya or pinapakialaman ang ating buhay, minsan napakatigas ng ating puso at sasabihin natin, hindi ako makikinig. We try to reflect how many times we neglect the Word of God because of the hardness of our hearts. Ilang beses natin hindi natin tinanggap ang salita ng Diyos sa ating buhay dahil sa katigasan ng ating puso. There are also times that the Word of God is being choked by the thorns in our life. Such as preoccupation with other things that can distract us from what is truly important and worthwhile. We let our hearts and minds be consumed with material things worldly things that can easily weigh down and draw us away to the core of God's message resulting from not bearing fruit. Maraming beses sa ating buhay na maraming kaagaw ang salita ng Diyos, maraming balakid at humaharang sa salita ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Gaya ng ating mga priorities, ano yung pinapahalaga natin sa ating buhay Minsan, we take for granted 
ang salita ng Diyos dahil iba yung priorities natin. O yung kaagaw ng Diyos ay ang mga material na bagay sa ating buhay. O ang ating power, prestige, position. Minsan mahirap marinig ang salita ng Diyos, ang mensahe ng Diyos, because marami itong kaagaw sa ating buhay. Maybe in this time of pandemic, sa ating pinagdaraan ng pandemya, we try to cut or remove all the blocks nakakasagabal sa pagtanggap natin sa salita ng Diyos or sa ating relationship with God. The pandemic changes our life, our perspective in life. Binago ng pandemya ang pananaw natin sa buhay and even ang ating pananampalataya. At sana with that realization, my dear brothers and sisters, we can already remove everything that blocks the message of God to enter into our life, to enter or to remove everything that is our, not necessary, the thorns in our life that hinders us from our relationship with God. Sa ating mga realization sa pandemyang ito, sana tanggalin natin ang lahat ng mga balakid, ang mga kakompetensya ng Diyos sa ating buhay. Pinapaalalahanan tayo sa ating mga pinagdaraanan natin ngayon kung ano nga bang importante sa ating buhay o kung gaano ba kalalim ang ating relasyon sa Diyos. You know, my dear brothers and sisters, even our hearts are hardened, pusong bato, or sometimes our life are have a lot of thorns, or sometimes the devil always comes in in our life. The good news of our gospel today is that even there are many things that block or hinder the Word of God, God is our persistent sower. God is our consistent sower. God is our generous sower. If you, if you realize the attitude of the sower in the parable, the first question that will come out in your mind is that, does the sower really knows how to plant? Marunong ba talagang magtanim itong sower na ito? Bakit, sinab bakit ikinalat na lang yung mga binhi sa iba-ibang lupa? The attitude of the sower reminds us of the attitude of our God who is not tired of sowing seeds, good seeds in us. Even alam niya it will fall in different kinds of soil but hoping and believing that someday His message will fall in a good soil where it grow and bears abundantly. Alam ng Diyos Minsan hindi natin siya pinapakinggan. Alam ng Diyos ang katigasan ng ating puso. But God never gives up, give up to us. He keep on sowing good seed in us. He keep on pouring blessings on us. Because He's a God who is a consistent sower. Persistent sower. And a generous sower. Hoping that someday, alam niya, magbubunga din ito at lalago sa ating buhay. Alam ng Diyos na darating din ang panahon na magbubunga sa puso ng tao ang kanyang salita. Magbubunga din ang binhi na itinanim sa ating puso. That's why our sower, our God, will never give up on us. He keeps on sowing freely and generously His blessings and goodness in our hearts. He wants, He, he waits patiently and sows perseveringly. God is not tired in sowing His Word, His message, His blessings in us. God is so consistent in loving us, forgiving us, and accepting us. Even many times we receive Him with a stony hearts. God remains in us even if we, have, if we block His message with the many thorns in our life. And even if we take for granted His blessings because our faith is shallow, God is still generous to us. That's why, my dear brothers and sisters, as we continue to celebrate this Eucharist, we pray, especially with all the realizations and experiences we have in this time of pandemic, that our hearts will be open to the work of the sower, 
the work of God in our life and submit with full trust and obedience to the will of God in us. We pray that we may always allow God's message to penetrate in our hearts so that we can bear much fruit and we can be fruitful in our relationship with God. The fruit that will lead us to peace and joy in our life, serenity and calmness because we know God is always with us and His fruit will always remain in us. In Luke 8 verse 15 it says, Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart and yield a harvest through perseverance. We pray that we may persevere even there are a lot of temptations, a lot of struggles and trials we are experiencing. Persevere that God's word may penetrate in our heart and that we may bear fruit abundantly. Amen. Prayers of the faithful. Christ teaches us through the, through the parables. Christ is the sower of the seeds of God's word. Let us respond to his work by praying to the Father. Let our response be, Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. That the church in the world may be like the rich soil, yielding a hundredfold harvest. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord of, of the, the harvest, harvest be, be gracious, gracious to us. That the leaders of our nation may govern in a way which is pleasing to God and to its citizens. We pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. That unchecked ambitions and selfishness may never choke the word of God in our lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us that the sick may experience the healing power of Christ. We pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. That those who have died may enjoy light, happiness, and peace in heaven, and may those burdened with grief be strengthened by God's word. We pray to the Lord. Lord of the harvest, be gracious to us. Heavenly Father, help us to realize, to recognize the seed of your word at work in our lives. May we never get distracted by the cares of this world, but be active in your service and so produce an abundant harvest. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. We offer you the sacrifice of praise, O Lord, as we rejoice in commemorating the mother of your Son. Grant, we pray, that through this most holy exchange, we may advance towards eternal redemption through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord, our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, to praise your mighty deeds and exaltation of all the saints, and especially as we celebrate the memory of the Blessed Virgin Mary, to proclaim your kindness as we echo our thankful hymn of praise. For truly, even to earth's ends, you have done great things and extended your abundant mercy from age to age. When you look on the lowliness of your handmaid, you gave us to her the author of our salvation, your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Through him the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the Jew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly to his passion he took bread gave him thanks broke it gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving a thanks, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Onesto, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all those who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be coerced to eternal life and may praise and glory find you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Gathered together as God's children and as one family, let us now pray to our loving Father in heaven. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from all evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin, safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope, the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace, the love of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. We now offer to each other the sign of peace. Peace be with you all. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take the sins of the world have mercy on us. Jesus, word of love, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Jesus, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only to say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Act of spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you are already there and unite myself fully to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Christ, be my son. 
sanctification, body of Christ, be my salvation, blood of Christ, fill all my veins. Wash out my stains, passion of Christ, my comfort me. O oh, good Jesus, listen to me in thy wounds I fain would hide. Never to be parted from thy side. Guard me, should the foe assail me. Call me when my life shall fail me. Bid me come to thee above with the saints who sing the Lord. Let us pray. Renewed with this heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that having received your Son, born of the tender virgin, under sacramental signs, we may profess him in words and hold fast to him in deeds, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. We now pray the Oracho Imperata. Merciful and compassionate Father, we come to you in our need to seek your protection against the COVID-19 that has disturbed and even claimed lives. We ask you now to look upon us with love and by your healing hand. Dispel, Dispel the, the fear, fear of sickness and death. Restore our hope, hope and strengthen our faith. We pray, we pray that, that you guide the people tasked task to find, find cures for this disease and to stem its transmission. We thank you for the vaccines developed made possible, possible by your, your guiding, guiding hands. Bless, Bless our efforts to use these vaccines, vaccines to end the pandemic in our country and in the whole, world. the whole world. We pray, we pray for, for our health workers, workers that, that they may minister to the sick with competence, competence and compassion. Grant them health in mind and body, strength in their commitment, protection from the disease. We pray for those afflicted. May they be restored to health. Protect those who care for them. Grant eternal rest to those who have died. Give us the grace in these trying times to work for the good of all and to help those in need. May our concern and compassion for each other see us through this crisis and lead us to conversion and holiness. Grant all this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. We fly to your protection, protection o Holy Mother, Mother of God. Do not despise our petitions and our necessities, and but deliver us always from all dangers. O glorious and blessed Virgin. Amen. Amen. Our Lady, health of the sick, pray for us. Saint Joseph, pray for us. Saint Raphael, the Archangel, pray for us. San Roque, pray for us. San Lorenzo Ruiz. Pray for us. San Pedro Calungsod. Pray for us. Saints Arnold Jansen and Joseph Renadimitz. Pray for us. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. With our heads, we pray for God's blessing through the intercession of our blessed Mother Mary. May God, who through the childbearing of the blessed Virgin Mary, will in His great kindness to redeem the human race, be pleased to enrich you with his blessing. Amen. May you through all, always and everywhere the protection of her through whom you have been found worthy to receive the author of life. Amen. May you who have devoutly gathered on this day 
carry away with you the gifts of spiritual joys and heavenly rewards. Amen. And may the blessing of the Almighty and loving God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit come Amen. down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go and be instrument of God's love to one another. Thanks be to God. kayo ngayong panahon ng pandemya. Nako, pare-pareho tayong burong-buro na sa pananatili sa loob ng ating mga tahanan, limitado ang ating pagkilos at pagbisita sa ating mga mahal sa buhay, ni halos hindi tayo makasimba. Kaya tamang-tama po na ang mga misyonerong SVD ay maghahatid sa inyo ng isang online prayer concert na tinawag namin huni ng misyon. So sa pamamagitan po ng 
konsertong ito ay makarinig tayo ng mga awitin, ng mga choir, ng mga individual, pati si Edda May Nympha na imbitahan namin para magbigay aliw at perspektibo ng ating paglalakbay sa panahong ito ng pandemya. At ito po'y magaganap sa apat na Sabado ng September tuwing alas 8 ng gabi. Online po ito. So kung alam niyo yung Password TV o yung iba't iba pong mga online channels ng mga SVD parishes at schools, doon po tayo maaring manood. At ako po, matutulungan niyo rin po kami sa pagkabahagi rin ng misyon ay gagamitin po ang proceeds na ito sa ating pangangalaga sa mga retiradong misyonerong SVD na nakupo, mga naglingko sa iba't ibang bansa, pati rito sa ating bayang Pilipinas. At ngayon ay dapat lang sigurong suportahan natin sila. So doon po ang proceeds ng huni ng misyon. Muli po, niimbitahan ko kayo na maging kabahagi ng online prayer concert huni ng mission. Marami pong salamat.